Winning a Bassmaster Classic puts your place in the history books. It makes your career. I'm doing everything I can to win this thing. I got a completely different mindset and uh, I'm really trying to make that trophy mine. There's no bigger stage in bass fishing or fishing than the Bassmasters Classic. It's not anything that you win in a popularity contest. You've got to earn your way there. Everybody remembers you for it. Th this tournament, it's, it's the biggest deal in fishing. The noise, the sounds, the cheers, the lights. It's probably the most special tournament I'll ever fish in my life. Bassmaster Classic Champion. That title is everything. That is it. Every angler dreams of being on the big stage and winning that trophy. This isn't my first rodeo, and it certainly won't be my last. Well, you heard the anglers. This is it, the single most important tournament in the sport of bass fishing. That was true 49 years ago when they held the first one. In each of the 48 years since then, it has been true and is today. Welcome to Toyota Bassmaster Studios. I'm Tommy Sanders here with former Geico Bassmaster Classic Champ Davey Hyde, and it's, it's head and shoulders above anything else, and always has been. Yes, Tommy, this truly is our world championship. It's, it's a tournament that we've all dreamed of trying to hold that trophy on top of our head, the Bassmaster Classic. It's a title that when I was 12 years old, I hoped that I could at least fish one of these. And, and fortunate enough to say, after holding that trophy over my head like so many others, it is a life changer. This is something that follows you as classic champion the rest of your life. All right, three days of fishing, only three days of fishing to decide our world champion as we get out to the start of day number one in the city of Knoxville. And of course, I'd say 75% of these anglers consider this to be actually new water, this stretch of the Tennessee River, but not for the favorite coming in, Knoxville, Tennessee's own Hot Defo. That's a question I've heard a lot is, you know, how does it feel to to be on your home water and, and, and it's it's really, really exciting to have the biggest tournament of my life right here in my backyard is really pretty special. You know, I mean, I've, I've fished a lot of tournaments, honestly, a lot of BASS tournaments around here. I've fished five or six opens on Douglas. I've fished a, a lead on Douglas, fished a lead on Cherokee. So all these tournaments at home, you know, have, I feel like have somewhat prepared me of how to, how to accept having a classic at home and how to prepare for it a little bit. So whether it was a Wednesday night wildcat or, you know, the biggest tournament of my life, just go out there and try to always fish in places where fish live and try to make the most of every bite. This one's gonna qualify as possibly the most important tournament of his life among those examples I've listed there as we follow him down the Tennessee River, pull away from Volunteer Landing and start heading down toward the dam and all of his figuring, all of his calculations have led us to this spot. I'm, I'm not thinking about a victory lap. I want that, but what I'm thinking about is what's the weather doing, what's the water doing, how's this gonna affect what the fish are doing. You know, th those are the kind of things that are going through my mind and where I'm going to catch the next bass and where I'm going to catch the next big one. So those are the factors that I'm considering more than, than trying to you know, visualize taking that victory lap. He ain't a big one, but he sure thought he was. That's one anyway. A little large mouth. Not quite a two-pounder, but hey, it's the one in the box. That's the one we didn't have. Just over a pound and a half, and Odifo is on the board right there. They're catching him other places too. Currently, Ott's only in 20th place as it stands right now, but he is up against, because this is the Geico Bassmaster Classic, the best in the world, of course, including the man who has won it four times, Kevin Van Dam. Well, when you think about the Bassmaster Classic, you certainly have to think about Kevin Van Dam. Like you mentioned, Tommy, he has won it four times. But here's another thing. When you think about the Tennessee River, you always think about Kevin Van Dam and the amount of success he has had on the Tennessee River. 
And here's something a lot of folks didn't realize. He didn't even come and pre-fish. He said, I don't want any distractions. It's the classic, I'm gonna go there with an open mind and fish the conditions. And he hit the nail on the head there. 18 inch smallmouth, that's a big smallmouth. But talking to Octopho, he said, you're gonna have to have a few of those in your bag. And Kevin Van Dam knows that along with Octopho. Well, you think Kevin Van Dam would be a smallmouth guy. Again, that 18 inch limit on smallmouth is on everyone's mind today. If a guy can figure out how to catch five keeper 18 inch smallmouths a day, I think you're gonna walk away with the trophy. And uh, you know, I haven't been able to do that to get consistency on them. I'm just kind of looking at them as a bonus. You're not gonna catch many smallmouth back here in, the, in these uh, backs of these creeks like this. You just never know where one can show up in this system. This is a real popular area right here in this creek. Thought I'd, I'd whipped in here to start and there's not another boat. I was really surprised. Two or three of the other places I looked coming down had one or two competitors already there, so just trying to find a place in the rotation where, where nobody's at. There's a good one. There we go. That's supposed to be biting your stuff. There's a nice one. That is a good one, getting uh, up there above the two pound mark. Kevin Van Dam now is on the board, the classic champ from 2001, 2005, 2010, and 2011. And we are underway in 2019, and you can see right there a couple of former classic champs in our top 10. The city of Knoxville, big predictions. Some said it would be the best attended ever. It's early yet, but Knoxville's already showing off. I'd heard, you know, Mercer talking to the crowd and hearing some people down there cheer and stuff, and I'm like, were that really that many people? And uh, I walked down the dock a little bit and I just, man, there's just people everywhere. When you get there to take off and there's thousands of people up there cheering you on it, you know, before daylight, I mean, that just shows you this is the Bassmaster Classic. You're taking off in front of, uh, you know, Neyland Stadium and there's 6,000 people cheering you on and yelling and, and I've never experienced anything like that, not in, not in my home area. That's a, that's a lot of folks to show up at 5.30 in the morning, and uh, you know, it was, it was uh, pretty crowded. I heard, I heard some folks said it was so crowded that they just decided to uh, sit in their cars. The 2019 Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods, is brought to you by Nitro Boats, Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Triton Boats. What the weather's done in the last six months is rain, it, and it ain't stopped. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been the wettest I can ever remember. They've had the spillway open since November. I mean, that's just, I, we've never seen that, you know, so, uh, it, it's, it's done a lot. We've had a lot of, you know, it's been a warm winter. Uh, then we had a real cold spell. Uh, I think it's going to really test, you know, a guy this week because I don't think it'll be one in one spot. The key on this body of water right now is everything's changing by the day, by the minute. Um, it's dirty, but still good fishing water. What I understand is this is just an abnormal year. A lot of rainfall in the area, um, and in turn, you're getting a lot of uh, current and it's it's manageable to a degree it's you know places like New Orleans once you pick a direction you're really stuck with it here um, you are to, to some degree it's also creating some really good fishing opportunities it can make it challenging but when you throw in current to the equation it changes everything dramatically so as many negatives as you hear guys talking about there's a big positive. Conditions always a huge factor in the classic. Our, our anglers breaking it down. That's our Yamaha Unlock the Lake. Well, current is always certainly a positive. If you can predict the current, the unfortunate thing here is you don't know what that current's gonna do on each and every day. You're gonna have to be flexible. Well, it's often been said if your area of the country is experiencing a drought, you might want to lobby for a Bassmaster Classic because half the time it means there's big rains in advance of one. And of course, we heard the comments on color and current there from Seth Bider, one of our guys who's out there. And we noticed on Seth today a very interesting article of clothing. And you bet we asked him about that. Oh, this is my, uh, my dad's club tournament jacket from 
1985 Bass Fever Bass Masters. Oh, look at that. 1985 Bohemian Bass Tournament Lake Oscar first place. Like, big time sh right there. I recently rediscovered it at my parents' house and figured it'd be kind of cool to wear it for at least the day one of the classic, but if I don't start getting bit pretty soon, I'm taking her out. Tried it out, Pops. Not going so hot. One, two pounder. All right, well, Seth is true to his word. He said if he didn't start catching him, he's gonna lose the jacket. So the, the legacy uh, bass fishing clothing has already come out and gone back, uh, back into the hold there as Seth decides to make a move. Seth fishing in his second classic, finished in the top 20 last year at Lake Hartwell. Love to do better than that here. Pretty nice out today. I'm going to get naked here in a second. Oh, 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 biggin, biggin. He got it really good. Come here. Yeah! Freaking choked that DT6, dude. Freaking choked it. You know they're eating a good when you got to coming from the backside to get them. Nice, close, close to three pounder. That one we needed right there. Well, there's a good start for Seth Fighter. He's another angler that had a great practice here using a crankbait, in this case, a DT6. Here's another guy you're gonna see with a crankbait in his hand a lot this week, Ot Defoe. That's a little better one. Maybe a coop. Be 18 inches. Easy keeper, baby. Oh yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It ain't it ain't every place you stop. It ain't ever ever so. And you don't never know which hole it's gonna be. I caught I caught that short and caught that one. There's a large mouth and a small mouth on the same place. But it's like Pull up, bam, bam, that's what you're catching. I mean, you, you just don't catch a lot of fish off these places right now. It's ones and twos, and a really, really good place would be three. You know, obviously the ultimate goal is to be out there Sunday with a shot to win. I don't have to be in the lead going out, but I certainly want to be, I want to have my name at the top when it's over with. So now I've got three, I've got two small ones, one decent small mouth, and I'll be fishing some history, but I'll also be trying to mix that in and just, you know, keep that in with just fishing as hard as I possibly can in a controlled kind of way, I guess. Well, Ot Defoe, things started looking up for him as soon as he put that good keeper smallmouth. The keeper smallmouth is a good keeper here on the Tennessee River, this part of it anyway. Just minutes after takeoff, this is Justin right. Lucas. He's catching two keepers here, but he's just got this one stretch. He says that's all he's got going for him this week. We're, I guess, about an hour and 20 minutes into it. We got two little keepers. We got one stretch, man, where I've, I had some really nice fish. I'm just hopeful. That's all I am. That's all I can be with that spot. It's a main river spot for largemouth, so a lot can change. Well, we certainly heard that from Justin Lucas, Octafo, and a few other anglers that have history here on the Tennessee River. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery. We heard Octafo say that several times. Justin Lucas said, hey, you want to have a good spot, but you get caught up. You need to keep moving around, and hopefully some fish will move to you. Geese is spooking all the fish. Shut up already. This one right here is where I caught that seven pounder. I had it come off right, right at the boat. The monster. Might be her. Not her, but a good fish. Not her, but a dang good fish. That's not even the one, man. It's a good one, but that's not the one that I lost. I lost a monster, twice the size of that one under this dock the first 
Second day of practice. Boy, that is a huge day one boost for Justin Lucas, our reigning Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Of course, he was the top man to qualify from the Bassmaster Elite Series based on his points during the season. The first guy to qualify was this angler right here, Jordan Lee, coming off back-to-back -back wins, Davey. He's, he's a fishing prodigy, that's for sure. He is, Tommy, just a great, instinctive fisherman. You see here, 27 years old and already has two classic titles to his credit 2017 Lake Conroe 2018 Lake Hartwell he's a guy not many young people can just go out and fish the moment especially on the biggest biggest stage ever the Bassmaster Classic but Jordan Lee is a great young fisherman we'll be seeing a lot more of him for many many years of course at this event Jordan Lee is trying to become the first angler ever to three-peat in the world championship the Geico Bassmaster Classic but today so far well he is not on track to do that but he's got he's got time I have a fish in his mouth. You, no, it's, he's got it right now, look. He's taking all my fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's comical. Oh, that's funny. There's a good one. There's a good fat one right there, boys. There we go. Nice fat one. That's a good way to see. A little bit better upgrade. Yeah, that's a meaningful fish right there, and it's going to translate into a move up the leaderboard near the top 12 or in the top 12 for Jordan Lee, one of only three who have won back to back Geico Bassmaster Classics. There's our top 10 right there. Unofficial at this point. We'll be back. Plenty more fishing to go here on the Tennessee River. Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by Dick Sporting Goods. What a host city we have here. Knoxville, Tennessee, all that history and what a college sports town. Needland Stadium, you saw it right there. And such a history in the Southeast Conference and a great, great bunch of fans here. Fishing fans too, here in this part of the country. Speaking of this part of the country, here's our pre-tournament favorite, Ott Defo, from right here in the Knoxville area. Take a look at his classic finishes. Ott is, is a pretty well-respected stick in the sport of bass fishing, and his record in the classic certainly bears that out. He's trying to make a win in the classic this week, though. There's one pretty good-sized rock that sets out off the other side of this point, so I just wheel the boat around that way, and, and I just clear the side of this flat nothing point, and I'm sitting in, like, three foot of water. That's a big one. Stay on there, baby. Oh my goodness, stay on there and be a bass. Stay on there. It ticks around a couple rocks, then it just gets heavy. And I mean, I, I lean back into that fish and I work it around the back of the boat. It goes out on the other side of the boat and it eases up a little bit and I see that white side and it flashed back down. So I thought it was a good one, maybe a four and a half pounder or something. Oh, it's a big one. Stay on there, baby. This place stay on there. Oh, yeah! Woo! Yeah, baby! <sighs> Lord, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> yes! Dang it, that feels so good. Dude, that's the kind of fish right there. That is a difference maker. Uh -uh. I mean, when I stood back up, I got the fish in live well, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to get myself calmed back down. I mean, my, it's almost like you have a cold chill. My whole body, I just, you just shake all over. I mean, there's no way to put it into words. Six pounder. Mm. Unless you experience it firsthand, you'll never have any idea what I'm talking about. But it's a, it's a feeling and an experience that you definitely want to do again. Well, there's nothing like that feeling, no doubt. When you're in the Bassmaster Classic, what you dream of of having an opportunity to win, it will make cold chills go up and down your spine. Most of our qualifiers here come from the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've got the Bassmaster Rookie of the Year race presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. And Lee Livesey, the Texan on top. Patrick Walters from South Carolina, Drew Cook of Florida. Rounding out the top three there. Boy, that's become important, more important with each passing year. You talk about a guy who's definitely not a rookie. 
51. He's the oldest competitor in the Classic uh, back in 91 on the Chesapeake Bay. He was the youngest competitor. But those numbers are staggering, Davey, and we, you mentioned just before. Those look like an entire career, not just your Classic numbers. It's absolutely incredible. If you look at those numbers, the number of top 10, top 20 finishes for Kevin Van Dam in the Bassmaster Classic is absolutely staggering. Well, he is looking. He's catching them. Kevin Van Dam will be the first to tell you he needs some big ones to show up. They're on them. I just dumbfounded the number of little ones. I mean, it's current. Main deep, super deep water. Big spinner bait. Well, big ought to be there, you know? There's a nice one. Well, that's how I caught tons of before. Kevin Van Dam currently, see, not too bad, 13th place. You just got to be in the top 25 after tomorrow's round. The Geico Bassmaster Classic, but still, uh, he's got the numbers going for him. As he said, I just I just need the size to show up as we move from Kevin Van Dam over to Michael Iconelli. You see him just off the main river there, just past that bridge, and he's turned into a numbers guy today. He, he has, just like Kevin Van Dam, another veteran, Mike Iconelli, he knows that you have to have big fish to win the Bassmaster Classic. It's the biggest yeah. stage, and you're going to have to catch good ones. He's All these competitors are great. But on day one, several anglers have been disappointed, not with the numbers here so far on Tennessee River, but the size. Mike Iconelli, another angler, had a tremendous practice, and things just haven't worked out for him so far this morning. You know these aren't the fish to win, right? But just need one of these to be like a five pounder and surprise me. They surprised me by being smaller than I thought. Maybe I'll get lucky and be surprised the other way. In the classic, you're not thinking about catching five two pounders. You want to catch the ones that matter, you know? Going back to DT6. This is a more of a shad based pattern. This is a color called Smash. See, sometimes this change in the color can make a big difference. Golly. Golly. There's a big one. There's a big one. There's a big one. Oh, big one. Oh, big one. Two and a half. There's five. There's five. And there's a limit. At 10 o'clock in the morning, the best master classic. There's five. Big smile and a limit. Day one, the Geico Bassmaster Classic for Mike Iaconelli, and that means a lot. The man who won the whole shooting match back in 2003. First Bassmaster Classic I attended was in 1996. On uh, it was down in Birmingham, Alabama, and George Cochran won that event. Went to nine of those events in a row as a kid. That that was stuff that made me want to be a bass fisherman. It would have to be Rick Klun uh, winning at uh, the James River. That's the one that stands out in my mind the most. First memory of a Bassmaster Classic, um, seeing them um, covered in magazines. And, you know, re really, that sort of built up this excitement that there are these guys out there making a living doing it and fishing this world-class event. You know, I've watched Bassmaster Classic since I was real little, but the one that really got me going has to be when I was actually at an event myself back when I fished FLW. And I believe it was the one Chris Lane won in Louisiana. And the coverage was at night when I would come in from practice. Seeing that classic and falling in love with it really got me chasing this dream. The 2019 Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods, is brought to you by Toyota, Yamaha, Skeeter Boats, Power Pole, Being right here in Knoxville, there's a lot of memories here, and uh, this, uh, it would mean everything just to do good in front of everybody. 
my sixth year on the elites and my fourth classic. And I, I know what this tournament means. This is a big opportunity. And, and to be fishing it in Tennessee, my home state, I'm, I'm hoping I can cash in here this week. <laughs> we'll see. There's no reason for me to stop anywhere where I don't have some history. I expect it will be hard to keep it together on stage every single day. Uh, there's a chance my emotions might get the best of me. Uh, there's a lot, a lot going on and, you know, just a lot to kind of sort through, but this is, this is as special of an event as I'll fish my whole career. As we watch our depot right there, remember that for forever, a, a local couldn't win the Geico Bassmaster Classic. It was just off the table pretty much. Now we pay attention to that. That's changed in the last 12 years, and uh, we're certainly paying attention to Ot Defoe. He's looking like he may make that come true yet again. He really is, Tommy. And he's, he's kind of taking control of this tournament. He's catching them so well. But, but there's locals in every classic. There's someone that seems to be the local favorite. And, and everyone that's in the Bassmaster Classic deserves to be there, and they're great fishermen, obviously, all three of these. But there's locals and there's locals. And Ot Defoe knows this river very, very well. For, for Brandon Lesser, he doesn't live so close by. Wesley Strader, we know he's a great fisherman, won his first elite last year. But Ot Defoe is certainly the guy to beat. Yeah, Ot Defoe today, and of course, a part of his prediction, I can do very well here. If I can catch a big one every day, maybe just one day might do it, but he's done that today. And Ot Defoe is certainly a guy we're not gonna take our eyes off for the next, well, it looks like three days at least. Got a lot of spectator boats out here with me too. It's been cool having them. We had probably 30 a little while ago. Ot Defoe on the move. As a matter of fact, we're going to call this uh, for you our Mercury move of the tournament. Let's take a look at Ot Defoe, and you had a good look at exactly what he's doing the last day of practice. Davey, you rode with him all day long. Yeah, Tommy, it was amazing how well Ot Defoe knows this lake, and he's he's picked out a certain area of this lake, but he's fishing very subtle, flat spots that he is he's used his mega side imaging, and man, he has got it figured out. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Stay on there. I hope you're 18. I'm quite sure you are. Woo! Well, Ot Defoe with so much experience operating like a guy with experience, operating like the guy who could be the favorite and was the favorite to start this Geico Bassmaster Classic. Also one of our Tennessee Three, the anglers we figure have some good experience here from farther away, closer down to Nashville. This is gonna be our first look today at Brandon Lester. This is just a big, uh, there's a big long gravel point that runs out, right out in here, juts out into the current. And uh, I caught a big smallmouth here in practice. There's a few largemouth mixed in on these places, which is kind of weird, but I mean, they're, they're feeding spots. You know, we're right next to the main river channel. My boat's sitting in 25 and I'm casting into like two feet of water. So we're in good shape. We're in good shape. There's number five, finally. I know he's a keep. Make sure. Yeah. Thought that was gonna be a small mouth. But large mouth in a small mouth place. Still got a lot of work to do, but it was good to have five in the box, that's for sure. So there we go, Brandon Lester now with five fish, a limit in the box. That's a good going. And a third of our Tennessee threesome is Wes Strader from closer to Knoxville. They come up schooling behind us again. Or just a minute ago. Whew. There he is, big one, big one, good one. Come on, gosh dang it. Dang it. Dang it. That was about a two and a half. Man, they're hard to come by. You don't need to be losing them like that, I can tell you that. Wesley Strader with a limit in the boat like the other two Tennessee anglers we are following today. 2018 was Wesley's first year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. 
And he qualified for this Geico Bassmaster Classic based on his performance all the way at the other end of the Tennessee River. He went on to giant Kentucky Lake, had a great four-day campaign, and knew how to put that one away. So a big win for Wesley Strader. It's coming up schooling again behind us. Just knocking the crap out of everyone, got it. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's got rid of more. Carrying it, dudes. Look there, caught him on the outside of the head. Pretty darn good first day at the Classic for Wesley Strader. Into the top six right there, and Wesley Strader's a guy who's been around bass fishing all of his life. I've been bass fishing since I was, I can remember my first bass, I was three, I caught it with my mom and dad in a little aluminum boat off Bluebell Point on Watts Bar Lake, it weighed two six. My mom and dad, my dad mounted it for me, and uh, I've had the bass bug since then, and ain't never checked up. It's a, it's an addiction that I don't want to put, be put in rehab for. Here at the Geico Bassmaster Classic, the World Championship, one of the big features, as always, is the Bassmaster Classic Outdoor Expo presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. We set the record for a takeoff this morning here in Knoxville, and right before they let the general public in here on day number one, they looked outside the doors and the crowds were wrapped around the block, so there may be more records in the offing before this big week in Knoxville is over. Let's get back out on the water on the Tennessee River with Drew Benton resident of North Florida who uh, earned his trip to the Classic uh, based on his win at the Toyota Bassmaster Texas Fest on Lake Travis down there by Austin. Won that tournament. That's an automatic in into the Classic. And of course, uh, Drew started out great guns this season. First event on the St. John's River. He showed us the first of what would turn into a tsunami of giant Florida largemouth bass. Oh, that will be an unforgettable tournament. People will think about that tournament for years to come. Drew Benton got himself off to a good start there, trying to get a good position here to go into day two of the Classic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Number five, anyway. Two pounder. Biggest one so far. Good one there, and Drew Benton has got his limit in the boat, currently at 21st place. Let's talk about Chris Saldane, another one of our anglers who, Davey, uh, had a good practice here on the Tennessee River. Had a great practice here, and, and Chris Saldane is, is having a great year. He had a, a tremendous tournament just a few weeks ago at Lake Lanier, using a small swim bait. Keep your eye on Chris Saldane. We are on the Tennessee River. Gizzard Shad, he loves to throw a swim bait, so keep your eye on him. Momentum is always a big factor, and Chris Saldane certainly has it. Right. Chris Aldane, 20th in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year statistics at the end of 2018. That's how he got into the World Championship here. It seems like, you know, momentum's a huge carrier. You know, a couple weeks ago out on Lake Lanier in Georgia, coming off a second place finish. Being comfortable on the water, making the right decisions, being confident in yourself and just having fun. When you're having fun out on the water and competing on the biggest stage, the time goes by so slow. You have fun, you're able to make the right decisions, and you can get the job done. There's one. Little dude, what about a keeper? I think. Just a little one. Yep, yeah, 14 and a half. Count every quarter. All right, number three. In the back of my mind, man, those flip fish up there. That's what I'm really gonna have to lean on. 
Chris Saldain still needing to put some weight into the boat to get himself into the upper echelon of classic competitors. Justin Lucas, well, he was leaning on one really one stretch of the river today and has yielded one good fish, but he needs some more weight as well. One ca last cast. Two pounder, maybe. All right. Two pounder. This bait was top secret until now. <laughs> it's a new Berkeley flat side crankbait, so. Come on, Justin Lucas, there are no secrets at the Classic. Too many eyes on this big event as we take a look at our Skeeter. Taste the bait. Well, looking at Skeeter Taste the Bait, you're exactly right, Tommy. If it was a secret, it is no longer here at the Bassmaster Classic. But here's one thing for sure. In East Tennessee, you see a lot of flat side crankbaits, but this is a new crankbait, a Berkeley Fritz side. Flat crankbait, he's cranking two to six feet rocks and docks. Let's get back over to Ot Defoe, and you figure if he's the winner when it's all over, it will have been a cranking classic. I truly feel like that water coming up hurt those pockets. It seems very backwards to say, but I really believe that because Friday and Saturday of our practice, the lake was so low. You go back in those little pockets and it was, you know, dry as, it's come up like a foot and a half, foot and three quarters. You're awfully long. You are an easy keeper. Small mouth keepers, that equals success. In this tournament, that is for sure. And there he is, Ot Defoe, with another one. Kind of stretching out his lead. Man who needs some small mouth keepers. He takes some big large mouth this time, Kevin Van Dam. Yes, Ott's got it figured out, some large mouth and small mouth bass. Kevin knows that he needs a mixture of two. He's just not been able to make it happen so far today. You take a look at Kevin's sterling classic record. You can pull out the top 12 victories he's gotten. You won't get past sixth place. He's been that strong in the world championship of bass fishing. So anytime Kevin is uh, is lagging behind a little bit, it's always as a shock to bass fishing fans, as it should be. This is the perfect scenario right here. I mean, we got the back of a creek, we full of shad. There he is. The water's warming. And number five anyways, but gosh, what's killing me, and look at, he's squirting. I'm gonna get him here someplace this last couple hours of the day. Just spot lock a second. This last couple hours of the day, the water's warming. This creek is just full of shad. There's not a, not a soul here. And I'm getting bit a lot, I'm just catching a bunch of little ones. Kevin Van Dam, so many people's greatest memories of fishing come from the Bassmaster Classic, and so many of those classic memories are all about KVD. Kevin Van Dam. I've always known how hard it is to win an event. There's no question that this is gonna be an emotional uh, classic for me. I mean, I have uh, so many friends here. Uh, I've got so many people that I've spent a lot of time for, for many years, you know, when, when I first started, uh, my first year was Trip Weldon's first year. I know what a big deal it would be, um, you know, to the world to, for me to win uh, number five, but I also know what it'd mean to me personally because I've been there. You know, there's a lot of different championship events um, out there, but the mystique of the classic, and I think it's, it's from those early, you know, from those early beginnings has built it to what it is today. You know, it's the Super Bowl, and uh, you know we all want to be there on that final day but for me this one is, is one i especially want to do well i love the thrill of competition i love the guys i compete against and that's what it's always been about but i also know what winning the bassmaster classic means so to win that fifth one would would really really be special
The 2019 Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods, is brought to you by Humminbird, Minn Kota, Talon, Mercury, Day one of the fishing at the World Championship Geico Bassmaster Classic, usually day one of Friday. A little bit light on attendance, but we'll look outside Thompson Bowling Arena. This is one of the biggest pure basketball arenas in the country. At one time, it was the biggest. And all those folks, they're all going to get in, but just barely. What a turnout in Knoxville. All right now, let's get back out on the lake with Justin Lucas. Owns the trophy for Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. He would love to add a classic trophy. There he is, dude. Yeah! Woo! That's sealing the deal right there, bro. It's insane. It's insane. You know, I remember being 12 years old, getting my first Bassmaster magazine, reading about an angler of the year, you know, and I don't know what to think. I still don't put myself up at that that caliber of a fisherman, but it's also hard not to when you got a trophy like that coming. So how do you top know. this? Bassmaster Classic Trophy is the only thing I need now. I've won a couple of elite tournaments, but nothing compares to AOY. And, uh, you know, you ask any guy out here, you take the money away, we've said it forever. Would you rather have a classic title or AOY? Almost all of them will say AOY. And uh, I just always grew up that way, really trying to be a consistent fisherman and to see it pay off in the long run at this level. Uh, that was the most satisfying thing that I've ever experienced as a pro fisherman. Justin Lucas, the uh, originally a West Coast angler, now makes his home in Alabama, having a pretty good campaign on this day, sitting there in seventh place, but look, he's just an ounce behind uh, the tie for fifth and sixth place. That might be a good one. Yes. Whew. Fatty. Hooked on the outside with the chatterbait. Look at that though. Fat largemouth. Well there you see Justin Lucas mixing it up from a crankbait to a chatterbait. Caught a nice largemouth there. And here's Octopho switching up from a lipless to a diving crankbait. Come on, big small lamb. Smallmouth, and that's what I'm looking for. That is exactly what I'm looking for. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I knew I tied that little fella on for a reason last night. I'll get rid of my last little one. Not quite four. It calls out that one. That wasn't even a two pounder. Says I got just shy of 20. 20 pound limit would be at the upper end of predictions for a single day limit in this tournament. But there it is, Odd Defoe seems to have it and Odd Defoe, the favorite coming in here seems to be fulfilling that prophecy. You've been waiting a long time, Knoxville. Let's hear it for him. Boom, Chakalaka! Giant bass for Adipo! He needs to have better than 17 pounds, 11 ounces. Looking for 17, 12, five fish all alive. 20 pounds even! 20 pounds and a brand new Geico Daily Leader in Adipo! You know, catching that, catching that six pounder, I said when I called it that that's the kind of fish that makes a big difference. Um, 
Because, I mean, I, I fish out here a lot, and you'll catch a good many fours. You'll catch some fives, but you don't catch a lot of sixes. And uh, when I weighed that on my, on my Rapala scale and saw that it was a six even, I, I, I knew then that it was, it was the kind of fish that can, you know, put you over the top to make that kind of difference. Hot on top, and sometimes, Davey, the chalk is right on the money. He was the favorite. And he, he took it all today, that's for sure. Tomorrow's another day. Certainly the favorite coming in here this week, but one thing he said before the tournament started, if I can catch a six plus pounder, it gives me a great chance to win. And lo and behold, he catches on day one. All right, he's got a magnificent opportunity tomorrow. Who knows what will happen? Our full field of 52 anglers will be out there on day number two of three that constitute this world championship tomorrow. More, the Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by Dick Sporting Goods.